Good evening, Stacy. Thanks for letting me visit today. Don't mind if I text you already. <laughs> Good evening, Aline. Thanks for coming today. It was our pleasure. I'm going to be marrying your brother, preferably next month, since, as you know, I'm pregnant with his baby. After that, the two of us are going to be sisters-in-law. Yep, I look forward to it. By the way, you're in your third year of high school and are going to university next year, right, Stacy? Yes. Are you going to be moving out once you graduate high school? I have no plans of moving out as of yet. Why not? Because I'm going to be entering a university that I can go to from home. But it's no use talking about that now. I haven't even taken the entrance examination yet, so who knows what will happen. Well, I guess that's true. <laughs> Tell me when it's decided, okay? I'll probably be moving in with you starting next month. Oh, is that so? Well, I hope we can get along with each other when that happens. Hi, Stacy. Care to explain what's the meaning of this? What? My wedding ring was found in your room. I was looking for it these past few days since I thought I lost it, but to think that you stole it? Hold on, I did no such thing. But I found it in your room, under your desk as if you were trying to hide it. I probably would have never found it if I didn't happen to decide to clean your room. I've told your brother and your parents about this. Everyone was furious. It seems that you were going to be staying here and go to university from home, but I told everyone that I'm scared of living with a thief when my baby is about to be born, and they all agreed to make you leave the house. But you didn't even listen to what I had to say. This is too unfair. But there was concrete proof that you had stolen it in the form of my ring hidden in your desk. I did no such thing, I promise you. No matter. Just hurry up and come home. Your high school graduation ceremony should be done by now, so hurry up and pack your stuff because you're going to be leaving. <laughs> I'm telling you, I didn't do it. Hi, Stacy. I'll be kind and ask, but are you unsure of what to do from now? No. I told my boyfriend what happened, and he believed me when I told him I didn't do anything. I'm going to be living with him in his apartment for now. Oh? Well, look at you. I didn't know that you had a boyfriend. <laughs> Yes, we've been going out since the second year of high school. I'm extremely grateful since I'm going to have to pay for my living expenses and university tuition on my own from now on. You brought this upon yourself. You went and fooled even your boyfriend. You're so young, but already so devious. I didn't do anything, but don't worry, I have no intention of returning home. Is that so? But let me ask you one question. Why did you hide your ring in my desk? Well, I guess if you don't have any intention of returning, then... You see, I want to have a share in your family's property. Our property? Like I was saying, I wanted your property, so I seduced your brother Charles and made him drunk, bringing him into a love hotel. As you can see, my plan of getting pregnant with his child so he had to marry me was a huge success. Your brother is such an idiot. Seriously? And if I chase you out of the family, then my portion of the inheritance after your parents die will be larger, since you'd no longer be there to compete with me. Which is why I came up with the idea of making it seem like you stole my ring. But it's also no use telling your parents about it now. <laughs> now that I've had a baby, they can't possibly make me leave anymore as the wife of the eldest son. <laughs> Not only that, but you're a thief in their minds. Besides, sisters-in-law are such a bother. It makes me laugh no matter how many times I replay it in my mind. Your mother shouting, leave the house, and your dad also saying, don't come back, 
thief? Your brother's reaction was splendid as well. I cried to him, saying that you had scolded me. And he got furious at you and said, You have no right of talking to my wife like that. You're just a child and a thief at that. You're awful, Aline, but I don't need a family that listens to nothing their daughter says either. I'm cutting ties with this family. Oh, I'm glad then. I mean, of course they believed me over you. I'm the one who gave birth to your parents' first grandchild. And as the eldest son's wife, I'm also going to inherit your family's property. No one's going to believe a stupid child saying that she did nothing even though she has no proof. I wanted to tell you those exact same words myself. What? Once I enter university, I plan on entering the film club. I bought a camera using the money I saved up in high school doing part-time jobs. What? There was one day where I accidentally left the camera recording in my room. You were caught clean on camera hiding your ring in my desk. What? I have no intention of returning home, so I'm not even going to bother showing it to my family, but... Just remember that I have definitive proof of what you did in my hands. Hold on! I also have our conversation by text as proof as well. Thanks for being cocky and telling me everything. Stop it! Don't forget that I can expose what you did whenever I want. N no way! Hey, Stacy! Stacy! Just what do you think you're doing? Oh, Aline. Long time no see. Stop acting all calm. You know why I contacted you, right? Oh, I guess. You're talking about the movie that's currently in cinemas, The Empty Family and Me, right? Yes, but what happens in the later half of the movie is different, but... The scene where the family kicks their daughter out of the house for a crime she didn't do... It caused a commotion in your family because it's what happened to you, no matter how you look at it. And doing some research, we found out that the novel that the movie was based on was written by your husband. Yes. So you went out of your way and told your husband about it? So you could have it published as a novel and even made into a movie? Don't you think that that's a little too evil? I told you a few days after I was kicked out of the house ten years ago that I would be temporarily staying with my boyfriend at his apartment, right? My boyfriend at that time became my husband. Huh? I'm going to tell you this so you don't have any misunderstandings. My husband hasn't said that that novel was non-fiction, but neither did he say it was fiction. The novel that my husband wrote was a huge success and was made into a movie. That's all the truth to it. Whether you interpret it as what actually happened 10 years ago is completely up to you. Your family finally noticed I was divorced because of it. Is that so? What's with that reaction because of you? It seems that my brother contacted my husband soon after the movie was released. What? My brother and my husband knew each other from before I was kicked out of the house and had each other's contact information. It even seems that my brother found out we married from a mutual acquaintance. Apparently my brother, after calming down, took his time to think about the incident more logically. But since all my parents could think about was their grandchild, he couldn't talk to them about it since they would always side with you. He spent the next 10 years unsure as to what really happened. But over time, my parents also started thinking a bit more logically. That movie was the final push they needed to be sure of my innocence. My brother had a lot of questions for my husband, so they met. And my husband told my brother everything that I had told him about the incident. Huh? He also showed him the camera evidence and screenshots of the conversation we had on text a few days later after I was kicked out. I had given them to my husband because he said that he wanted to use it as inspiration for his novel. No way! 
My husband, the author of that novel, he didn't tell me anything about it since I had already given up being reunited with my family. But I guess he just wanted to prove that I was innocent of the crime I was accused of ten years ago and wanted to tell the world about it in one form or another. At least that's what I think. Are you being serious? Do you know what I had to go through because of that? The baby you gave birth to as part of your plan in making my brother marry you wasn't actually my brother's child, right? Uh... It seems that my brother told my husband about that as well. As he grew older, it became more apparent that the child's face and body features didn't look like those of anyone in the family. My brother, after watching the movie and hearing what my husband had to say, decided to test every possibility. So he had him and his son do a DNA test. It came out saying that his son wasn't related to him by blood. Why'd he have to tell your husband about that? Perhaps it's his way of making up for his sins. I also heard about the fight over who would take custody of the child. My brother's trying to take custody, saying that even if they weren't related by blood, he was still his son who he had raised the past ten years. The child himself is closer to my brother and parents than he is to you. This combined with other factors like finance and home environment allowed my brother to successfully take custody. That's what happened, right? It wasn't supposed to go this way. To think that the forced marriage I had succeeded in making happen would fail ten years later. I could have made it fail at any point by giving my family the evidence, you know. I just couldn't be bothered to do it. I knew your parents cut ties with you, so I didn't do anything since it might harm your child, who was innocent. What? Fast forward ten years, and it seems like there's no need to worry about that anymore. I'm so glad, but... Didn't you consider what might happen to me? What? If I'm kicked out of this house, then I'll have nowhere to go! Did you have that in consideration when you let your husband publish his novel? Um, did I have to have that in consideration? What? You're an adult, right? There's no need for me, a stranger, to have your well-being in consideration. You're not a child who can't live without the help of adults. What? Well then, I guess that's all I have to say. Hold on, Stacy! No matter what you say to me, there's nothing I can do for you. Not that I would, even if I could, though. Stacy! We were sisters-in-law, even if it was just a few months. Surely you must have some compassion left for me. There's no way I would have any compassion for someone like you. Goodbye. A few days later, I got a letter from my family apologizing for what they did, thanks to my husband's words saying that you should at least accept the apology as a way to put an end to this business. The stubborn feelings I had towards my family lightened just a bit, so I promised to exchange New Year's letters with them, even though I have no intention yet of coming home. My ex-sister-in-law, Aline, on the other hand? It seems that thanks to the kindness of my brother, she was excused of having to pay child support in exchange for her division of property following the divorce. And the alimony she had to pay for cheating on my brother was basically nothing. But since she had no relatives to rely on and had been spending the past ten years as a housewife in my parents' wealthy home... She was in huge trouble after my brother divorced her and she was kicked out of their home. She had to find a job as soon as possible, so apparently she just took on a random job that paid well, but... It seemed the work environment she put herself in was quite harsh. Now she's forced to work every day on the verge of having a mental breakdown. Thank you for the wonderful dinner tonight. I had a great time and so did my parents. They said that you're always welcome to our house for dinner. And my mother said she'd love it if you called her whenever you wanted some company. My dad also said he can't wait to beat you in chess again. <laughs> I'm so glad for all of us to have spent quality time again. We should definitely do this more often. Hi, Mike. The pleasure is mine. Thanks for the great spread and for the wonderful company. Tell your father I'll come over to play chess any day. Just make sure he's prepared to lose next time. <laughs> anyway, thanks for having us over. 
Glad to have you as my son-in-law. I'm glad to hear that. Thanks so much. No worries. Let me know if you need anything. I'll be here for you. And let me take this opportunity to thank you for marrying my daughter. I'll tell you she's my one and only love of my life. After her mother, of course. Ever since her mother passed away, my life has been all about my daughter. And now that she's in safe hands with you, I couldn't be more grateful. I guess I should take it back a notch on the formalities. <laughs> it's all good. And don't worry about Alice. I'm going to make sure she's the happiest girl she'll ever be. She means everything to me. I won't do anything to hurt her. I can only imagine how difficult it must be to let go of your only daughter. So like I said, I'll stick to my word and I mean it. She means the world to me. You've got nothing to worry about. I'll take great care of her. Well, I'm relieved but still a bit heartbroken and sad. You're right, letting go of Alice brings back a lot of memories of when she was a child. Oh, all the good and the bad times that I'll never forget. You're a good man, Mike. Take care of her. Don't worry, Kyle. She's in good hands. <laughs> I'm sure. My only wish is for you and her to eventually start building a wonderful family of your own together. Don't worry. We'll do. Look, I'm telling you now. Living with someone, especially your wife, isn't going to be so easy. I mean, my daughter is wonderful, don't get me wrong. But living with your spouse is different from living with a friend. Now, I know you haven't lived with anyone besides your parents before, so Alice is the first person for you to share a living space with. I think you'll both have a lot of adjusting to do. But, I sure hope you two will get along. Oh, don't worry about that. My parents will love having her around as well. Well, that'll be even better then. The more, the merrier. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's normal for anyone living together to have disagreements at some point. But Alice and I communicate really well, and that's one of the reasons why I love her. So again, don't worry, I'm sure we'll be fine. Well, I'm glad to hear that. She's been with me since she was born. So this will be a whole new environment for her. Not only to live with you, but your parents too. But... It seems like you'll all just be fine. Yeah, I'll make sure she can live with us comfortably, and I'm sure she will. I think she's going to be the perfect wife. Well, she doesn't have to be perfect. She's already perfect in my eyes. As long as she's happy, that's all I want for her. Anyway, let me know if you need anything, alright? Let's have dinner again soon. Talk to you soon. Hey, Dad, how are you? I miss you. I'm just checking in on you to see how you're doing without me. I hope you're eating real food and doing some proper cooking. You better not be just heating up frozen food in the microwave again. Daddy, I miss you. Uh, oh dear, how did you know? Dad! Well, that was just what I happened to be eating tonight. I just put the pizza in the oven a while ago for a quick dinner. I was too tired from work today. Don't worry, darling. I do most of the cooking throughout the week. Do you want me to bring some food over for you? Or shall I come over to cook something up for you? Maybe I can meal prep so that you can have some variety over the next few days. I don't mind doing that. Just let me know, okay? No, no, love. You focus on taking care of your own family now. I'm a big boy. I can take care of myself. <laughs> of course, Dad. Well, that's okay then, I guess. What's the matter, darling? Is something wrong? How's living with Mike and his parents? Yeah, it's going well, Dad. Don't worry. Okay, well, that doesn't sound too convincing. Are you sure you're alright? There's no need to be concerned about me. I'm absolutely fine, okay? Don't you go worrying unnecessarily about me. Yeah, I'm fine, Dad. You're right. I was just worrying about you. But if you say you're okay, then I guess I'll take your word for it. So, how is it cooking for everyone? I'm guessing cooking for four people is quite different to when you just cooked for the two of us, right? I miss your home-cooked meals. You're a great cook and I'm so proud of you. Yeah, I guess it's going okay. I'm not allowed to eat until everyone else is done eating anyway. What? Oh, no, no, nothing, Dad. Oh, Dad, I have to go now. Sorry. I need to clean up over here and do the rest of the chores before Mike comes home. 
I'll talk to you later, okay? Oh, Alice, do you really have to go now? We just started talking. Are you sure you're alright, honey? Yeah, don't worry, Dad. I'm fine. You take care, too, okay? Night-night. Love you. Love you, too, honey. Hi, uh, Mike. What time are you coming home tonight? Dunno, man. Depends on my work. Do you think you'll be home late? Would it be alright if I eat my dinner first? That way I'll be able to do the other chores while you're having yours later? What? You think you can eat a meal before me? I'm the breadwinner. I'm the king of the house. What kind of king eats after everyone else? The king is always fed first. Who do you think you are? Have you still not got that through your thick skull? Sorry. What kind of household did you grow up in, woman? How can the wife even imagine eating a whole meal before her husband, huh? You married into a traditional household with traditional rules. You're in my house now, so you have to abide by my rules. I don't want to have to tell you again. Or what? What are you trying to say? Are you trying to imply that I'm not a fit enough husband for you? Hmm? Do you think you deserve to eat a meal before me because you're better than me? Hmm? No, no, of course not. You know you're the best husband I could ever ask for. I'm so truly lucky to have you. I love you, darling. It's my fault I asked you such a silly question. Of course my king needs to eat first. How silly of me to have asked such a question. Looks like somebody needs to be taught a lesson yet again. Look, if you're not the perfect wife to me, then guess who's going to be embarrassed in front of everyone? Me. Now you wouldn't want that, would you? You wouldn't want your darling husband to be embarrassed in front of his colleagues and his boss, would you? No, of course not. Hmm, didn't think so. Right, here's your punishment. You should know this by now. No dinner tonight. You have no right to eat the food I bring home with the money that I earn through my blood, sweat, and tears. No, wait, please. Your mother also didn't let me eat lunch today. I'll starve if I don't eat tonight. So what? Why should I care? If mom said so, then you probably deserve that. If you've had breakfast, then that's all you need. Count yourself lucky to have had a meal provided for you. If it weren't for me, you wouldn't even have had breakfast. Okay. Well, you don't sound appreciative enough, or is it just me? Are you being a little ungrateful cow, dear? No, no, I'm sorry. You're right. I don't deserve to eat dinner after asking you a foolish question like I did. Good. Don't forget to have my bath ready by the time I come home. It better be at a perfect temperature this time. Yes, darling. Daddy, I can't do this anymore. Darling, what happened? What can't you do anymore? I can't live like this anymore, Daddy. Are you having trouble over there? It's only been about a month since you started living with Mike. Remember how I told you that things won't be easy at first. Nothing ever is at the beginning. Dad, I haven't eaten for almost a week now. They won't let me eat anything. I'm so hungry, Dad. Please help me. What? Why aren't you eating? What do you mean? I've lost so much weight in the last month, Dad. You probably won't even recognize me like this anymore. Alice, is this some kind of new fad diet you're on? This is so unlike you. What's going on, love? No, Dad, I'm not on any diet. That's the punishment they give me when I make a mistake. I lose a meal. I've been making a lot of mistakes recently. Excuse me? Alice, what is going on here? Well, it's kind of my fault, I guess. I just tend to do things that Mike and his mother can't tolerate. I just keep messing things up for them. And they get so angry at me. And I say I don't deserve to eat the food they provide. Daddy, I miss living with you. I miss when it was just me and you. I really do. Alice, who's doing this to you? Is it Mike or this unbelievable mother of his? Well, they both say it's for the best, and they're doing it for my sake. For your sake? 
How is this supposed to help you? I'm not having this. I won't allow anyone to treat you like this. Daddy, am I such a bad person? Maybe I really deserve this and it's all my fault. Daddy, am I just a bad wife and daughter-in-law? Maybe I'm just a bad human being. Alice, let me get this straight. So it's not just Mike, but his mother is involved in all of this doing too. Am I correct? They said it's my fault that they have to waste their energy in making me do the right things. Daddy I asked if I could have my dinner before Mike comes home the other day and he got so mad at me. It's things like that that make them so mad. What should I do, Daddy? Can I just come home to you, please? Please, Daddy! No, Alice. What? You stay there, love. Daddy, but why? Please, help me! I just want to come home to you. No, listen to me, Alice. Stay right where you are. Do you understand me? Yes. I understand. I'm sorry, Daddy. Don't apologize to me, Elvis. Look, you've done nothing wrong. Just trust me, I'm your father. Stay there for now, darling. Mike, where are you now? Oh, hey Kyle. I'm still at work. Why? What's the matter? Don't lie to me. Excuse me? I called your office just now. You're not there. You called the office. Well, what did you do that for? What's going on? We need to talk. Oh, well, I'd like to know what's going on here first. This is scaring me. What happened? Did something happen to Alice? Did something happen to Alice? You idiot. Who do you take me for? You are the one who did this to my daughter. My daughter, you little mongrel. Huh? Look, Kyle, I have no idea what you're talking about. Calm down. I'm asking you nicely. How dare you mistreat my daughter the way you have been? Do you think any father would put up with that? You just take me for some kind of fool? No father would accept this. <sighs> Hold on a second, Kyle. What did I do? I'm sure you're getting mad over nothing. Look, if you think I'm mistreating your daughter, that's not true. I told you. I just want your daughter to be the perfect wife. I want everyone to see her and see how perfect of a wife she is. Of course she needs to be taught that. So my mother and I are simply educating her. We're teaching her all the skills she needs. Passing down mannerisms, appropriate behavior and all of that. I'll have you know my mother is a great teacher at that. That's all it is, really. I don't see any issue with that. To you? So are you telling me that starving my daughter to death is one of the lessons you're teaching her then? Starving my daughter to death? Oh. Oh, that. Well, that's just a bit of punishment, really. I mean, if you did something bad, it's not fair to get away with it, right? Even a child knows that. So, not having seasoned a dish the way you like it is a reason to force someone to starve? Just because my daughter asked to have her dinner before you came home late at night? That's a good reason to starve her to death? Is that what you're telling me, Mike? She is not your slave. She is my daughter. I will not allow this. Kyle. Well, what would you know? You're divorced. You've been alone for so long, you probably forgot what it's like to live with someone you love. I mean, besides Alice, of course. But look how she turned out. She has no common sense whatsoever. She's the clumsiest person I've ever met. Very uneducated, disorganized, she's all over the place. But I see that she has potential. She just needs a nudge in the right direction. She's a fast learner, though. We just know what she needs to be doing, so we teach everything that we know to her. That's all it is, really. Look, my wife passed away five years ago due to cancer. I believe I told you before, but I guess you weren't listening. Well, how sad. That's none of my business, though, is it? If anything, it makes sense. No wonder Alice has turned out the way she has. She wasn't raised properly by her own mother. Mark, why, you little... If you want someone to take care of you and smother you from head to toe, why not hire a maid, huh? A housekeeper. My daughter isn't what you're looking for, and I won't allow you to treat her the way you've been. I'll make sure she's gone by the time you return home tonight. Uh, who the hell do you think you are storming into my household and criticizing my family? Alice is my wife. She's my wife. 
She's my daughter! Ugh, how embarrassing. Look, all of this is a case of a newlywed couple trying to figure things out in their new home. We're still trying to settle down. Don't embarrass yourself. She's an adult now. I don't think she needs a father coming to rescue her from her newlywed life. Why don't you respect her right to make her own life decisions? My daughter has been living under the same roof as a chauvinistic nincompoop for more than a month and I never knew till now. She's lost weight and she's frail, all because of her incompetent husband turned out to be some immoral wretch. Not helping my daughter out of this mess. That would be embarrassing. <sighs> okay, yes. If you want to be the hero that badly, then go ahead. Fly over in your cape and help the woman escape. Mike, you did well for yourself. You managed to deceive both Alice and I into thinking that you were a good guy. But how wrong we were to place our trust and faith in a man like you. I should have trusted my gut back then. I knew you were a bit off, but I assumed those were just your nerves. <sighs> Look, I'm the normal human being here. You're the one with the odd daughter. And I'm the fine man here who comes from a normal upbringing in a lovely home with a decent education and a great job. Ah, okay, well then. I'm sure you'll have no problems if I talk to your boss about all of this. What did you say? Well, seeing as I'm on the board of directors, I have some major concerns about the future of the company if we were to allow someone like you to get any power. I can't be investing in a company that employs a barbaric, narcissistic idiot like you. I'll be sure that the company takes appropriate measures to handle this case on my behalf. What are you doing, Kyle? Don't you dare involve my job in this. Oh, I'm sure they won't mind. We have a very transparent relationship, and our rapport is built on that. I'll be sure to let them know about your affair while I'm at it. Gee, domestic abuse and affair and a divorce? You've really been going above and beyond. <sighs> what? No, no. What are you even talking about? An affair? A divorce? You're getting ahead of yourself, surely. Do you really think Alice is stupid? She has proof of your affair. She has all the proof of the abuse you've put her through. She has everything she needs for an open and shut lawsuit against you. You've got a lot of compensation to look forward to, Mike. Maybe some jail time, too, if there's any justice in the world. <laughs> Don't joke around, Kyle. This is all a joke, right? I assure you, this is no laughing matter. You've got what's coming to you. <laughs> Kyle, take it easy. Why are you acting so weird all of a sudden? Let's talk properly over drinks, eh? If I did anything to you, then let me apologize. Look, I'm sorry. Well, what do you think you're apologizing for then? Well, I mean, for having Alice skip a meal or two. Now I understand that that may have been a bit too crazy. Look, that'll never happen again, okay? So please, let's not talk about divorce and whatnot, yeah? Truce? You think I'm that easily swayed, huh? Remember, you've also had an affair and breached your marital vows. <sighs> Well, that wasn't technically an affair, really. I mean, come on. You're a guy, too. You know what it's like, right? No, I don't. Gosh. Why did I allow my daughter to get married to the lowest of social scums like you? Why? Anyway, look. What's done is done. Alice is adamant about the divorce. I've got a lawyer ready. And as for a company doing business with your company... As a board member invested in this project, I can't have any personal qualms let it get in the way of a profitable transaction like this. <sighs> no, you're kidding, right? Think about how bad this is going to look for the both of us. I'll be fired if people at work find out about this. I'll sue you for defamation. I would love to see you try. I told you we're drowning in evidence. Just try me. And just a heads up, my lawyer is a good one. So you better have a good lawyer on your side yourself. Alright, alright, Kyle, I'm really sorry. I truly apologize. Please, this isn't fair. Let me at least talk to Alice about this first. Please, you've got to listen to me. I love Alice, I really do. She's the love of my life. You can't take her away from me. I can't live without her. If you think you'll ever get the slightest chance to see my daughter again, think again. I'm going to do whatever it takes to ruin your life, Mike. The same way you did to my daughter. You won't have a job. You won't have a wife. Your life is over. No, 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 please. <laughs> I'm so sorry. 
There is no use in apologizing now. Don't you dare come near my daughter again, you piece of filth. Apparently after this conversation, Mike rushed home in the hopes of settling everything down. But instead he came home to his own parents who were in an absolute state of shock after their confrontation with me. Mike then came to my place looking for Alice and I kicked him out promptly and threatened to call the police. Alice filed for a divorce soon after and it wasn't long before all of Mike's colleagues found out about all the drama. In the end he was fired from his job too. He's now left to look after his elderly parents without a wife or a job. If you ask me, he deserved what he got. Let's hope he suffers a little bit more until he learns his lesson.